Hi, I'm Chris Henry. I'm a research geologist with the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology, which is a part of the University of Nevada in Reno. And obviously I'm based there in Reno. And I do geology all over Nevada, uh, some in adjacent states, and I particularly a lot of northern Nevada uh, in Elko County and around the Ruby Mountains. Um, and I do a combination of uh, what I would call basic science, where the immediate application is a little obscure, to uh, very applied science, applied geology, for example, trying to understand the origin of uh, major mineral deposits, and, and gold mining, as an example, is a really major part of the Nevada economy. Um, and I do this through geologic mapping. Uh, geology is just really fun because geology can be very, very complicated and it's like working out a puzzle, a very large, very complicated puzzle, and you just have to keep working at it, uh, looking at rocks, identifying what the rocks are, what has happened to them, trying to work out the whole puzzle. Um, and we're here on a field trip in the Ruby Mountains led by Art Snoke, uh, which was quite interesting, and it was looking at um, what was happening at, to some rocks um, that were very that were very buried to very great depths in the Earth's crust. Um, and it was interesting because these are rocks that uh, a very variety of ages um, where other rocks of the same age were very close to the surface and now have big gold deposits on. And using as an example Carlin type gold deposits, for example the Carlin trend, um, the gold in those rocks are in what are sometimes called cratonic uh, sedimentary deposits, sort of limestone, silty limestones that were deposited along the western margin of North America in the uh, early Paleozoic, uh, 500, 400 million years ago. And Art showed us these same rocks here in the Ruby Mountains that were buried to great depth. They were really highly deformed and metamorphosed and they're now marbles and and schists and a whole bunch of things like that. Um, but at the surface, or very near the surface in the Carlin trend, um, they have giant gold deposits. Um, the Carlin trend has produced oh, much more than 50 million ounces of gold already and it has a lot, lot more of it there. And the there's always been controversies about how Carlin type deposits formed. They're a, a relatively new deposit in the sense that they were only recognized as a deposit type in the 1960s, whereas many other mineral deposits were recognized long ago, including going back to you know, prehistoric times almost. Uh, Carlin type deposits, the, one of the first questions, people really recognize that they mostly occurred in these. Um, silty limestones, these cratonic sedimentary rocks, but a big question was how old? When did those deposits form? And initially there were some thoughts about uh, you know, very late Cenozoic, you know, maybe 15 million years ago, and then at one time there was a favored idea that they were Cretaceous maybe about 115, 120 million years ago. But a lot of work by a lot of geologists over the years, um, really the last 20 years or so, has shown that they're largely Eocene. Um, in the Carlin trend, maybe about 40 to 38, 37 million years old. And then what geologic processes were involved in forming these deposits? Um, and there were issues about metamorphism and fluids released by metamorphism coming up into the crust. Um, uh, another idea that was the extension was somehow driving fluids and uh, one of the more favored interpretations now is that uh, igneous activity, uh, magmas that is, actually provided the gold, probably the fluids that were involved in, in generating these deposits. And there's a lot of research going on in these, on these topics and you know, we'll learn a lot more as we go along. I, I'm, I'm one of the people who very much think they're, they formed mostly in the Eocene. There may be some Carlin type deposits that did not, but the vast majority of them definitely formed in the Eocene. And they are certainly related to igneous activity. 
Whether or not the magma has actually prov provided the gold, I think that's very possible, but that's something that really, to be proved, is going to take some more work. Um, and, of course, magmas don't form at the surface, and these deposits are, were very close to the surface then when they formed and, and today now when they're mined. Um, magmas form at much greater depth in the lower crust, in the mantle. Uh, there's always big questions about how much crust and mantle is involved in any particular magma. Um, but they certainly don't form near the surface. And so seeing uh, the igneous rocks that were these magmas at much greater depth is really interesting. And that's what we did today, looking in the Ruby Mountains. Um, Art showed us some Cretaceous intrusions. Uh, I think he mentioned 92 million years. Uh, Jurassic intrusions around 160 million years. And particularly some Eocene around 39 million years. And we call it the uh, Carlin-type deposits of the Carlin trend formed about 40 to 39, 30, maybe to as young as 37 million years. So these were the at least the roots of the magmas that may have been involved in their formation. And uh, ideal uh, study of these deposits would combine um, looking at the surface manifestation, the actual deposits and whatever igneous rocks are associated with them then at, at that level, but also then looking at the much deeper roots of these systems, the igneous rocks that uh, were at depths of 10, 20, 30 kilometers into the crust and what they're like and, and what's going on with them.